What's up, Bears fans? And welcome back to our Sinus College Sports Network. I'm your co-host, James Schold. And I'm your co-host, Steve Weissman. Now that we are past the break, spring sports are finally back. On today's episode, we'll recap each of the sports teams who competed on their spring break trip, including two featured athletes who attended their respective sports NCAA tournaments. Also, we will highlight a softball player who is leading her team this year and what she thinks about her team's chances this season. All right, let's go. We present to you, Sports on Main. While they didn't have a spring trip, the men's lacrosse team did compete over the break with two games, both of which came against top five seeds in the division. The Bears couldn't get a win in either of their matchups against Christopher Newport and RIT, but following the break this past Wednesday, they redeemed themselves by defeating Stockton 13-7. Jonathan Singer had a great day in net with 15 saves and the defense holding Stockton to only have shots in three of the four quarters, and that's why we can see how they succeeded. It's great to see the guys bounce back from two tough matches in such dramatic fashion. After coming back from their trip to Puerto Rico, the women's lacrosse team had a matchup at Stockton on Wednesday. The Bears came out on top, beating the Ospreys 15-12. Tied going into the second half, Stockton started to pull away, scoring four goals in the third to Ursinus's two. But the Bears showed up in the fourth, going on an absolute tear to finish the game, scoring six straight goals to finish off and clinch the victory. With three of those goals, freshman Maeve Lianzi led the attack, followed by senior Riley Morgan with one of her own and freshman Grace Lynch with two of her own and two assists. With such a crazy ending to this game, I think we can expect some excitement out of the women's lacrosse team this season. The baseball team took on Widener this past Wednesday on the road and couldn't come up with the win. The Bears fought hard, keeping the score close in the first seven innings. However, two late home runs from the Pride changed the course of the game and the Bears couldn't recover. The Bears finally got the bats going, getting 10 hits, but couldn't drive them home, leaving 13 men on base throughout the game. The Bears look to improve this weekend as they play three games in two days, playing Alvernia and Eastern respectively. Coming off our last show, we talked about how we had some of our spring sports teams going on a spring break trip. Now it's time to look back at how softball, baseball, women's lacrosse, and both men's and women's tennis performed over the break. Down in Myrtle Beach, the baseball team had a stellar beginning to the week. Winning five games in the first four days, scoring 52 runs from the plate, but allowing only 11 runs, the Bears proved they are ready to score. The Bears started a tear at Stevenson, losing the first game, then bouncing back with a 7-0 victory and a 9-4 win to take the series against the Mustangs. In South Carolina, the team went 3-5, but the young team showed that they are ready to fight and to prove that they compete in the conference this year. Just seven hours south, the softball team made a name for themselves in Claremont, Florida, coming home with a 5-2 record from the break. The Lady Bears had four of their games canceled and still ended up winning most of their appearances. They also had a big scoring trip with a game ending 10-9 and another ending 16-2. The pitching this week also shined with a team ERA of 3.4, shutting down the opponent and dealing 21 strikeouts. It's great to see the team get off to such a great start. The men's tennis team had a great trip down to Orlando, securing two wins and just one loss with one of their matches also getting canceled. The highlight of the trip for the men's team was playing at the USTA Center, which is home to world-class practice facilities and are the home courts of UCF. Sophomore Lars Jesperson had an impressive week with three wins at doubles and a two-in-one singles record at the one position in both formats. It's great to see the guys bounce back from their match against Swarthmore. The women's tennis team also had a great trip to Orlando, also competing at the USTA Center. With one of their matches canceled, the Lady Bears brought home a 2-2 two two record to bring their overall record to 4-2. First year, Allie Armour led the Bears this week, competing at the one spot in singles, getting a win on the last day at that spot, then on the third day in doubles with senior Maddie Russell. I can't wait to see what both tennis teams have in store for us this year. Unfortunately, due to the inclement weather this past weekend, the men's and women's golf teams had their first tournament of the year canceled. However, both teams did get a chance to play some fantastic courses this week and got to experience some great practice facilities, allowing them to prepare for their upcoming season. As we introduced in the last episode, we had two individual athletes qualify for an NCAA tournament. 
we had junior Terry Adams from the wrestling team head to Cedar Rapids, Iowa and compete against some of the top Division III wrestlers in the country. Also, we had Rachel Conhoff representing the Bears when she went to Winston-Salem, North Carolina last week. Terry took to the mat this past weekend in Iowa with a lot of preparation and definitely a lot of travel under his belt. Terry didn't perform up to his standards, but he spoke to us about the experience and how it can prepare him, saying, the experience was amazing, the atmosphere was awesome, and being able to represent our sinus is something I'm looking forward to doing again next year. Terry really spoke with a lot of confidence, talking about how this can inspire his teammates and even himself in the future, saying, I believe this is going to push people because now everyone wants to share that same experience I had and want to either end or further their career with this amazing accomplishment. With a lot of their top competitors returning next year, we should expect more Bears again on this trip next season. Now we can't leave out the other competitor who took on the national stage on the track, Rachel Conhoff. Conhoff had some success at the meet in North Carolina, setting a school record in the prelims of the mile. She also matched the pace in the real race, finishing just one second slower. We had a chance to ask Rachel about what she thought about the experience, and here's what she had to say. Uh, my overall experience um, for competing at NCAs this past weekend, um, I think I could sum, sum it up as surreal. Uh, it was an honor to get to race against the top uh, women in the nation for the mile. Um, and just being on that track. So the JDL Fast Track is known for holding some of the fastest times, not only in the nation, but in the world. Um, not for just D3, but for pros um, and all the elites. So just getting to step foot on a track that has so much history and so much, I guess, speed was really, really cool. Um, and just being in that atmosphere, um, I just felt very grateful and thankful that I was able to make it to that level um, and get to compete with such amazing ladies. Um, yeah. For outdoor, I'm just kind of going with the flow, um, seeing where it goes. I'm excited I get to participate um, and compete in the steeplechase, which I haven't done since freshman year. So I'm really excited to get to do that. Um, hopefully getting to lower my um, 1500 time as well. So I think it's outdoors. I'm excited. So um, I just miss being All-American um, in the finals by one spot um, at indoor. So I think I have more fuel for the fire. I'm ready to kind of put my best out there and see where it takes me. Um, and yeah, I'm just excited. And I just want to make sure I'm having fun. Um, I love the sport. I love my team. Um, I love the gift that God's given me to just go out there and run. Um, so I hope to just continue to improve um, in the best way that I can. Thank you, Rachel, for catching us up on your success, and good luck to you in the outdoor season. This week, we have a new segment for you all, focusing on one athlete from the spring sports team. Pitching for the Bears for three seasons now, senior Kayla McTamney is entering her final season, and we thought Kayla could give us some insight on how she feels this year and what the team's energy is like. We also got a chance to ask her about how this season feels after the COVID season, and she said this. It feels great to finally be able to have a normal start to the year. It feels great to finally be able to have a normal start to the year. Kayla also talked about how having their trip back makes her very happy, saying this. I think having a normal start to the year just makes it 100 times more exciting to be back and potentially work even harder. We also asked Kayla how she felt going into the year and what her expectations are about this year. Going into the beginning of the season, I am feeling very confident in our team's ability. I have full trust in my defense behind me when I'm pitching, as they are always there to do their job. They make my job look so easy. As a team, we have a lot of potential, and I'm feeling really good about what this season holds. Finally, we asked Kayla about what she thought about her team and their chance this year, and she said this. This team is special because we consist of a lot of underclassmen, that have a lot of talent, as well as three classes that have not experienced a real season. I think these two combined make us a very special group. Thank you, Kayla, for sharing your thoughts with us. It's really great to hear about how the softball team is enjoying the start to their season, and good luck to them this week at Gwynedd Mercy. This weekend is jam-packed for Sinus Athletics with nine different games or matches. The action begins with two Ursinus swimmers competing at the NCAA National Championships in Indianapolis. Sophie Lear and Ryan Karkov will be racing in multiple races throughout the weekend. Karkov will become the first men's swimmer in Ursinus history to compete at the championship. 
Baseball will have a doubleheader Saturday at home against Eastern. Make sure to follow those results on the athletics page at ursinusathletics.com. Men's and women's tennis will head to Lebanon Valley starting at 1. Men's lacrosse will host number 5 seed St. John Fisher on Patterson Field at 1, followed by the women's team at 3 hosting Drew University. Good luck to all the athletes competing this week. Now that just about wraps up everything we have here for this episode of Sports on Main. Before we go, I would like to thank you all so much for tuning in and to give a friendly reminder to follow all of our social medias and the links for those are in the description below. We're all so glad to be back with you. Tune in next week for our episode with anchors Aaron Devine and Maddie Wilson. From all of us here at our Sinus College Sports Network, I'm co-host Steve Weissman. And I'm your co-host James Schold. And as always, Go, go Bears! Bears! We present to you Sports on Main. Where? In this one. Up there? <laughs>